Yo what's up guys welcome to my humble youtube channel where I bring you fanfiction that will brighten your days. Before we start a subscribe is greatly appreciated and don't forget to leave a like and ring the bell icon so you won't miss exciting new fanfiction stories. Rimuru x Harem, Regret and Returning into the Past. By Peaches 05312 Gods Summoned to a Fantasy World by Ben Graham 1234. Chapter 1. Arrival to a brand new world after the summoning circle was activated with a little bit of Rimuru's power. Rimuru and Chloe disappeared and appeared in the middle of a room with people. Rimuru and Chloe looked around and saw that there were many people in the room. Rimuru looked closely and saw that the people inside the room were dressed in fancy clothes. He guessed that this people were probably nobles with the way they were dressed. He kept looking around and saw a throne and seated in the throne was a man who he guessed was the king based on his appearance and crown. By his side, also seating was a woman who he guessed was the queen. And by both of their said were a boy dressed like he could be the crown prince and a lady who he guessed was the princess but she appeared to be breathing hard with so many people dressed like maid fanning her. Rimuru looked down and saw the summoning marking on the floor indicating that this people were the ones who summoned him and Chloe. He watched as the person who was obviously the king stood up from his throne to address them. Welcome young ladies to my kingdom. I am the fifth king of the spades kingdom. My name is Stan Edward and I am humbled to have you in my kingdom. The king said to Rimuru and Chloe. Rimuru stepped forward. Nice greeting your highness, but I would like to know why you summoned us to your kingdom. That is understandable. If you don't mind, I would like to explain the situation to both of you in a different room with less crowd. The king told them. That's fine with me, Rimuru turned to Chloe, what do you think? I have no problem as well, Chloe answered him. There you have it King Edward, Rimuru said to him. Very well. Please follow me, the king gestured for them to follow him. Rimuru and Chloe were led to a room with two cushioned seats which were opposite each other with a table in the middle of both seats. The king gestured for them to seat at the cushion that was opposite his own. Rimuru and Chloe sat down and waited for the king to begin. By the king's side, seating next to him was the woman who he knew was the queen and by both of their side was the prince and princess. Before we start, can I ask if she is alright? Chloe asked referring to the girl who was breathing hard next to the king. Oh, please don't mind her. She is my daughter and her name is Kanade. She was the one who summoned you two to this world. She has the highest magic powers in the kingdom and because of that, she was the only one who can perform an interdimensional summoning without dying. The king explained to them. Why would you risk the life of your daughter to summon us? Rimuru asked in confusion. To answer that I would have to explain how this world operates and the dire situation we humans are in, King Edward Said with a sad tone. Well then. It started from, and so the king began to explain the situation to Rimuru and Chloe. According to the king's explanation, this world has many races similar to Rimuru and Chloe's own world, but there are eight main race that dominate the world. There are the angels, demon, fairy, elf, giant, vampire, dragon and demi-humans. Besides those races, there were lesser race that are not as many in population as the other eight, but are all still a part of the world. Those race are goblins, ogres, orcs, dwarfs, spirits, titans, humans, undeads and so many more. These races are smaller than the main eight in population but not in power. All the races have been fighting for supremacy of the world for millennia. Among this races, the humans were the weakest because of their low percentage of mana which is basically the main source of power in the world. The war between all races have been going on for a long time because of the will of the gods. Everything that goes on in the world was being controlled by the gods who watch over it from their realm. The gods has been fighting with each other which created a faction between the gods. Some gods believes that they should rule the mortal race with an iron fist and install fear and chaos among them while some believes that they should no mingle with the mortals and let them live the way they want without getting involved. Both sides ultimately detest the mortal race but they just don't have the same objective. One side considers it a bother to have the gods approaching the mortal and the other wants to bring total despair to the mortal race. Because of this, the gods who wants to bring chaos to the world were banished from the heavenly realm and are now referred to as evil gods. The evil gods resides in their own realm known as Babels while the other gods remained in their realm known as Celestia. The two side began their fight with each other, but not directly. 
Due to the fact that a god's power were absolute, gods were banned from ever fighting each other directly by the supreme deity who rules over all gods in the world. Because of this, the gods were now using the mortals to do the fighting for them. They're each control a part of the mortal race and are using them to conquer the parts controlled by the opposing gods. The gods each have their respective leaders who are the most powerful among the gods. The leader of the gods who resides in Celestia was a female god known as Miyuki, the creator. And the leader of the evil gods who resides in Babels is a male god known as Dadan, the chaos bringer. This gods each control a section of the mortal race. The gods in Celestia controls the humans, fairies, demi-humans, dryads, angels and elves. The evil gods in Babels controls the demon, titan, goblins, lizard folks, undead and the giant. The races that are being controlled by gods are the ones who dominate the most population of the world. Though, there are some races who have no influence from the gods, but are still a dominant race in the world. The dragons for example are among the dominant race even though they are independent of the gods. The reason is because, some of the dragons have enough power to challenge the gods. The gods from Celestial offers their blessing to some mortal which turns them into demi-gods. People who are blessed by the gods are called apostle. They move to fulfill the wish of the gods that blessed them. The evil gods have no need to bless any of the mortal they control because they already have enough power to fight and crush an apostle in battle. The reason the gods in Celestia decided to offer their blessing to some of the mortals is because of how weak the races they control are compared to the race being controlled by the evil gods. Those blessed can now stand and fight anyone from the other race that is not a general. For the generals of each race is controlled by the evil gods, it will take three apostle and other to match them in a fight. And because of that, all the race have been fighting to defend themselves from the races being controlled by the evil gods. The races being controlled by the evil gods have conquered many part of the other races and have increased their lands. Because of how few the number apostles are, the other races are only struggling to survive in this world. The total number of apostle in the world are 20. It's not that the gods from Celestial doesn't want to create more apostles, it's just that mortals who are compatible with their blessing are very rare. The apostles are demi-gods which made them immortal. Some of the current apostles are those who were blessed by a god centuries ago. In this one-sided fight, the human race have only ever managed to produce a single apostle and he became so arrogant that he went and joined with the demon race. Because of this betrayal, all the races that are under the gods in Celestia detest the human race and the gods in Celestia has turned their backs on the human race. With how weak the humans are, the demon race and the vampires have made it a point to use them however way they want. The vampires uses humans as their meal, while the demons uses them as their slaves. Humans were nothing more than guinea pigs to the other race due to how weak they are. Which brings us back to the current situation. For the first time in history, a human was born with a magic power that rivals the weakest of the demons which is a huge big deal considering that the weakest of the demons have enough power to destroy a very small town. This human name was Princess Kanade and she was the daughter of King Edward. She was the hope of humanity because of her magic powers. After she came of age, Kanade began to practice summoning magic in the hopes that she can summon anything that could help save her race in this war. It was only when she turned 16 that she discovered interdimension summoning magic. She trained and mastered this spell with the hope that she could summon a hero or anyone who can help fight the other race. She was determined to use this spell, but her time ran out. The kingdom of spades was a kingdom that survives through offering their women to the demon race to become their sex slave. Every new month, they would offer any woman who is under the age of 10 to 30 to the demons in other to receive their protection from the other races. It might seem cruel, but it was the only way for them to survive. If they didn't have the protection of the demons, the vampires would have captured them and made them their food stock or the demons would have enslaved them all. Because of this, they had no choice but to offer their women in exchange for their lives. The princess was the one chosen by the demons to be offered this month. Princess Kanade didn't care one bit what happens to her, but she had to try and use this summoning in the hopes that she could summon a hero who will save her people. She used the summoning spell today because tomorrow was the time the demon will come to collect her as their sex slave. She activated the spell, but she didn't have enough mana to complete it. She poured everything she had in the spell, but it wasn't enough. Just when she was losing hope, the spell gained more power from out of nowhere and activated on its own which summoned both Rimuru and Chloe. 
So you see, our people are living a life of hell due to how weak we are. We had no choice but to rely on the summoning spell. It was said that when a person is summoned to this world, they gain tremendous power to rival even the demon king. Please, would you lend us your strength heroes? King Edward sighed to Rimuru and Chloe as he bowed. Rimuru and Chloe were deeply moved by how much the humans in this world have endured. The situation would have been the same in their own world if not for the rare humans who trained until they become saints and heroes. It was thanks to them that the human race were not all conquered in their own words, but here, they didn't have such because of their lack of mana and it doesn't look like this world has any skills. The situation was dire and they had no choice but to help out. Rimuru looked at the king with compassion. He was going to help, but he had to ask first, what do we gain from offering our help to you? The king looked up at him with a surprised look, I don't understand what you mean. He is asking what do you people have to offer us in exchange for our help, Chloe told him. Both Rimuru and Chloe knew that they would help this nation and all the other humans, but they needed them to know that they are not pushovers who will obey their every whims. I knew this people could not be trusted. Father, why do we have to rely on outsiders who does not understand our situation? I can handle the demon who will come to take away Kanade. I've been training a lot with the sword and I'm confident in my strength. We do not need this two outsiders to survive, the boy seating next to the king said. Rimuru turned to the boy, and you are? My name is Shu and I am the crown prince of the spades kingdom. I'm also the twin brother of Princess Kanade, Prince Shu introduced himself. I see. Do you believe that you can defeat the other race by yourself? Chloe asked him. I can and I will. Watch me. I'm going to beat them without your help, Shu said with confidence. The woman who was the queen immediately bowed down to Rimuru and Chloe, please forgive my son. He is a hothead who doesn't understand the danger the demons or the other race poses. And what is your name miss? Rimuru asked. My name is Sakura and I am the queen of the spades kingdom. Queen Sakura introduced herself while still bowing. There is nothing to forgive Queen Sakura. Prince Shu simply wants to prove his strength and I myself am curious to see how strong he is with all his boast, Rimuru said to her. Fine then. If you want to fight me, I will be more than glad to. Prince Shu couldn't finish what he was saying because a guard ran into the room in haste. Your Highness, we have a problem, the guard shouted. The king stood up. What is the problem? The demon Dabura has come to collect the princess. Everyone in the room except for Rimuru and Chloe were all shocked to receive such news. The queen and princess were visibly shaking in fear after hearing the name of the demon. While King Edward is trying to remain calm but he too is shaken from the news. Rimuru turned to the king. Who is Dabura? The king swallowed a lump on his throat before he answered. He is a high demon who has made a reputation for himself for his dislike for humans. The high demon are only one level below a demon general and their powers are said to level a kingdom in seconds. Rimuru smiled. I see, he turned to Shu who was frozen on his seat. Isn't this a great opportunity Shu? You get to prove how strong you are against a high demon. Prince Shu who was paralyzed in fear from hearing the name of the demon, regained his composure a little after hearing what Rimuru said. NN not a problem. I will fight this demon myself. I can't wait then. Rimuru said to him with a smile. Chloe connected her mind to Rimuru and asked, Are you really going to let him fight this demon? With the level of mana I'm sensing from the throne room, I would say that this demon was as strong as an archdemon. Don't worry so much. I won't let anything happen to him, but guys like this can only learn through experience. Rimuru answered her in his mind and with that, they all left the room and went to the throne room to meet the demon 